Hi everyone, I thought I'd do a quick video showing you how to estimate the population mean with a confidence interval with and without the knowledge of the population standard deviation. So once using the standard normal distribution and once using the T distribution. I'm gonna do this in an Excel spreadsheet. You could certainly do this on your calculator, but you know, Excel spreadsheet has some advantages and it's nice to learn how to organize things there. I'm not gonna use any fancy functions inside Excel, just besides adding, squaring, square rooting, but I'll show you how to organize this information. Let me switch to Excel spreadsheet. So I'm gonna share the screen with you, share this window with you. And this is problem 101 in chapter eight of the book. And just summarizing briefly, there were 1,619 candidates for the U.S. House of Representatives in the 2012 election. And we've collected data, the Federal Election Commission, Commission has collected data on what contributions they received. So you could consider the discrete random variable X to be the contributions that were received by these candidates in the 2012 campaign. We're interested in the average value the candidates may have received. And we can't necessarily sample all 16 or 19, although that data exists somewhere apparently according to the Federal Election Commission. So we've taken a sample of 40 candidates and we'll let X bar be the mean value of contributions received by the sample of 40 candidates and see if we can estimate the population mean from the sample mean. They give us the information in this problem that says the population standard deviation is known to be 909,200. And they want us to construct 95% confidence intervals. In the problem, they just wanted us to construct the confidence interval using the population standard deviation. But I thought I'd do it once with the population standard deviation and once with the sample standard deviation and the T distribution. So that's what I've said here. Total contributions for the random sample of 40 candidates is given below. Actually, it's given in the problem of the book. So let's go over to the book where the problem is picked up. And I'll just see if I can copy and paste these numbers into my spreadsheet. Come back to the spreadsheet. Excuse me, I'm trying to share my spreadsheet again. I can paste these numbers here in the spreadsheet. And they got formatted with dollar signs and stuff. I could go to the number function and just make them ordinary numbers. I don't need these extra decimal points to the right of, extra zeros to the right of decimal points, I'll get rid of them. The problem was reported to me to the nearest hundred. So I might report my answers to the nearest hundred, but I'll keep this data as it's written now. I will use the same font as the, Excel spreadsheet here, just so everything looks normal. So I've got 40 data points in this box. Notice the spreadsheet counts the 40 data points, gives me the average and the sum, but let me arrange them so I can put them in a table here with sample data. I can arrange them, just by kind of dragging these values till I make a single column. And then I'll do something else to make it easier to present. I will sort these numbers from smallest to largest. That's not necessary for the calculation, but it just make it easier to look at. So sorting features under data, sort. Smallest to largest, no header. So just this data inside the box is gonna be sorted. And let's go with it. There are those numbers sorted from smallest to largest. And I'll just drag them over to my column X for the sample data. Now let's fill in what I'm given and we'll start to do some calculations and then we'll fill in the answers that we need. So I was given that the sample standard, the population standard deviation was 909,200. I'm gonna calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. I'm given that I have 40 samples here. I can count them and check, but there are 40 samples. That means 
for the T distribution, the degrees of freedom is 39. And the alpha, I want a 95% confidence level. So the alpha is 0 0.05. From that, I'll calculate Z alpha and T alpha on my calculator. Now let's calculate X bar right here. That is the average of this 40 samples. I can just do that by summing these 40 numbers. Tell Excel to sum the 40 numbers. And divide by this number right here, the N, the 40. Or I could just tell it to divide by 40 directly, but I could divide by this cell. Uh, somehow I don't like those numbers. They look odd to me. So I sum the numbers. I divide it by 40, divide by this cell. And there's the, that looks more realistic. 568872.5. I don't think I have more decimal places than this. Let's check out. Excel naturally rounds things off and gives you as many decimal places as you want. So it's $568,872.50. That's the average. Now let's calculate the deviations and the deviation squared so I can do the sample standard deviation. The deviations, I'll just take the 400 minus the number in this box. Say, click on 400, subtract number in this box. And I want to make that number fixed so that I each time I subtract by that special number, what I can do inside my Excel spreadsheet is put dollar signs in front of the D and the 22. There's more than I need to do, but that'll keep that number fixed so that when I pull down, this number is also calculated with 2,900 and that number I just calculated for X bar. Click on the formula bar and you see what numbers are being used in that calculation. So now I'll pull this down through the spreadsheet. And that is the list of all my deviations. Each one of them I can spot check is using the number to the left and the X bar that I've calculated. Now I'll square each one of those just by saying take this value and square it. And I can pull down, but I can also do this in Excel. If I've got columns already established, just click on this square box in the lower right-hand corner, and it calculates all those values. Okay, so now for sample standard deviation, what am I gonna do? Sum all the deviations squared and divide by N minus one. So I will say, take the square root of that after I'm done the square root in Excel, SQRT, and sum all of these boxes here. Just highlight them. Good. And then close that sum and divide by N minus one. N minus one I've already put in the degrees of freedom here. So I could just click on that 39 right there and then close the square root. There's the sample standard deviation. It's giving me a lot of decimal places right now. I'm probably not gonna use that level of precision, but I'll just keep them handy. Now let's calculate the Z alpha and the T alpha from my calculator. And that's going to be, I'll pull up my calculator over here, but you're used to using that. The inverse norm command on the calculator for the Z alpha over two, 0 0.9750 0 and one. Let me write that in this box and then I'll erase it in a minute. It's the inverse norm command under distributions on your calculator. And I want this much area to the left, 0.975 standard normal distribution, mean zero, standard deviation one. And that command on my calculator will give me this number. 
zero, zero, if I round off to four decimal places. For the t alpha over two, the command is inverse t and 0 0.975 with 39 degrees of freedom. And on my calculator, that's reported to me as 2.027. Again, I'm rounding 2.0227. I'm rounding off <coughs> to four decimal places. So these two numbers I got from the calculator, I'm going to erase them here. Mm, can I keep them around? Oh, let me keep them on the spreadsheet. If that helps you look at it a little easier. Let me expand that so you see the two commands written. Now what should I calculate next? I need to calculate z alpha over 2 times sigma divided by the square root of n. That's going to be the error bound for the mean in part one, where I'm using the sigma, and then the error bound for the mean in part two, where I'm using the t distribution, I'm going to use the sample standard deviation. So error bound for the mean is equal to the z alpha over two times the sigma population standard deviation divided by the square root of n40. Fill in those cells and let's we'll see what I get right here. 281763 with a lot of decimal places. What if we did it with a sample standard deviation instead? Equals T alpha over two times sample standard deviation, which we've calculated here, divided by the square root of N. There we go. So those are the error bound for the mean. Let's make that red in that column as well, just to keep things organized by color. Notice the nice thing about Excel is when you click on a cell, it tells you what formula you used. And if you click on the formula bar, it even highlights the cells that you used in that formula. So I know that I'm using the right cells. Okay, now let's do X bar minus the error bound for the mean and X bar plus the error bound for the mean in these two cells. So I'm gonna say equals X bar minus the error bound for the mean this is with the population standard deviation. And then equals x bar plus the error bound for the mean. So that's where the 95% confidence interval will be stated. Let's do the same thing for the t distribution. I'm using the sample standard deviation this time to create the confidence interval. And now I'm going to write the confidence intervals in here. The data was given to me to the nearest hundred. Uh, there's no harm in reporting the confidence intervals to the nearest hundred. So they are, and right now I'm using, let's make these text boxes here so I can just write into them. Good text box. I'm using the interval 287100, dollars to $850,600. That's my 95% confidence interval. And now the same for this. I'm writing text 300. 1,300, lower bound, and 837,400 for the upper bound. These are my 97% confidence intervals, 95% confidence intervals. So I'm going to say it like this for the first answer. I've calculated with 95% confidence that the population mean for this 
distribution is between $287,100 and $850,600. That means I expect that if I calculated many confidence intervals in this fashion, 95% of the time, the true mean value of contributions received by the sample of 40 candidates, by any sample of 40 candidates, the true population mean for all the candidates would be between $287,100 and $850,600. Same for using the sample standard deviation here. Here the interval is somewhat smaller. I'm using the sample standard deviation. So you can reason why that interval might be somewhat smaller. You could repeat this calculation also on your calculator and see if you get the same result. But I thought it'd be interesting to present the example on an Excel spreadsheet, just so you can see it done, see it organized in a different way.